John Hessinger. It's a public speaking SPC 215. Today we're going to be talking about the commemorative speech. The speech uh, encompasses all the different types of happinesses that you might have uh, in this world. Uh, those can be cause for celebration and those celebrations can be the joys and excitements that you had maybe with someone, maybe some place, uh, maybe some experience, maybe the, the whole speech is itself a story. Um, or it can also be kind of like a speech of remembrance. Um, you know, oftentimes people will say like a eulogy, like you would hear at a funeral. Yes, it can be that, but it doesn't have to be quite that sad. A uh, speech of remembrance can be kind of celebratory. I'll give an example of that a little bit later. However, um, the remembrance typically is a little bit more solemn, a little bit more respectful uh, than maybe the, celebra the celebration speech is. And they all come down to the idea of virtues. In your speech, you're going to be required to have three virtues. Now, a virtue is an identifying characteristic or trait um, of your topic. So if it's a location, maybe you're talking about how the sunset hits the beach with the palm trees swaying in the breeze. You're going to be talking about the beauty of that. If it's a person, maybe it's about how loving or giving that person has been. Um, maybe if you're tributing a celebrity, maybe it's about how funny they are. Maybe you're tributing how successful they've been, um, or you know, even celebrities can be generous. So maybe uh, you know, philanthropic, how how charitable they are as well. But a virtue is an identifying characteristic about your topic, and a virtue is broken down into two ways. You first have the tribute. The tribute is the direct statement of fact. Such is this. So, um, Robin Williams was hilarious. You are directly stating that as a fact. Now, have you proven that statement yet? No. Now, most people who see, have seen his movies would understand the context of it. Most would even agree with it. However, the virtue does not end at the tribute. It doesn't end with just the statement. The virtue then goes to the exemplification. Once you make the statement, you then need to prove it. And you prove it through examples such as narratives, maybe a background story about how uh, funny uh, you know Robin Williams was, maybe a, maybe you're a list of uh, you know his funny movies, um, or it can be a personal story. You know, if you have a personal story with Robin Williams, great. Most of us wouldn't have a personal story with a celebrity, so most often the personal stories are about us or experiences that we've had or loved ones but you have narratives from other places you have stats um, you know maybe there was a ranking about the funniest men in the world and maybe he was number one there you go that would be an exemplification it would be an example of that it would prove it quotes maybe you have other quotes from other comedians people who are qualified to know what funny is and quotes along with stats, along with stories, go to prove the statement that you make. Here's an example of what it is that I'm talking about. The idea of a virtue, the tribute and exemplification. Now, most of us have grandparents. Most of us have cherished memories of our grandparents. I, in particular, have a, a grandmother on my mom's side who is particularly giving and loving and you know very aware of what people were, were were needing so if i wanted to tribute her i could say my grandmother was the most loving grandmother in the world that is a direct statement now some of you may be going ah 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 my grandma is and that's completely fine we all have those experiences the idea of a persuasive speech is you are arguing not to necessarily convince but to get them to consider your point of view. Yes, the main reason why we persuade is to bring them over to your side. But in something this subjective, typically you're gonna be arguing to try and bring them over to consider your point. So if I was to say my grandmother was the most loving grandmother in the world, a lot of you would maybe push back on that. Nah, 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 nah. So what do I need? I need some sort of exemplification. Now, will quotes work if I get quotes from my family? I don't know, because you don't really know my family. 
the stats work. My grandmother had statistics. You know, uh, you know, maybe maybe she might, maybe she volunteered, maybe she won, you know, something like a philanthropist of the year or charity, you know, um, you know, maybe she gave this amount of money to charity. But in this particular instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a story, a personal story to try and bring you over to my side. Now, my grandmother was the most loving grandmother in the world. I know many of you might say, no, nah, my grandmother was very loving, so how can yours be the most loving grandmother in the world? Well, what if I was to tell you that when I was about five or six, my, my parents would drop me and my little sister off at our grandparents every weekend, and every weekend my grandparents would be watching whatever was on PBS. Typically that included things like Hee Haw, uh, oftentimes another TV show called The Lawrence Welk Show. I only remember it because it was a, a band was playing and bubbles were filling the air. It was really weird to a five, six year old. On this particular Saturday, there was a telethon. Many of you might be familiar with telethons. Most of you might not be. Back then in the late eighties, a telethon typically would have people comedians, actors, actresses, um, people who can do stupid human tricks like yo-yos or dogs, you know, doing different types of tricks. The idea is you bring in people that can attract eyeballs, keep eyeballs on the show. And so that those people that are watching the show can be flooded with the ideas of whatever they're trying to raise money for. In this particular, this particular Saturday, it was a telethon for World Hunger. As we were watching, you know, the different songs or the different sort of tricks, in between there were visuals of, you know, young kids that were completely starving, you know, and, you know, it was very unsettling to me as five and six year old. I couldn't quite understand why they were, you know, not able to eat food. And my grandmother, sensing that I was, you know, you know, kind of upset, she goes in and she comes back out with something that she knew would calm me down. And while it seems weird to be talking about it during a conversation about public, uh, about, about world hunger, my grandmother brought me a bowl of ice cream, vanilla with hot fudge on top. That was always my go-to to just comfort food, you know, just calm me down. Well, as I'm sitting there enjoying the next song or show, all of a sudden they start talking about the last handful of people who donated. And all of a sudden I hear my name, John Hessinger. I'm like, what in the world? What my grandmother had done was she sensed that I was moved to help. But being five, six years old, I don't have any money. So what my grandmother did was she went in and she made a call to the, to the telethon and she made a donation in my name but not just any amount. You could only get your name read over the air if you gave a large amount. My grandmother was not wealthy. They, they, they didn't have a lot of money. She did this so that I could have that moment cemented, crystallized in my brain about the importance of giving, about the importance of giving even out of your own need. And I've always remembered that that it's important to give to those who need help. So when I say my grandmother was the most loving grandmother in the world, it was because not only did she give, but she gave selflessly in my name so that I would remember and continue that legacy of kindness and of giving and of awareness. So that is what I mean when I say tribute with an exemplification. Now, that exemplification was a little bit long. It was, uh, it was a story about things that took place in the past, and some of you might not have been aware of what the Lawrence Welk show was. Heck, I didn't even talk about Hee Haw. It was basically like a redneck Saturday Night Live. Um, and then some of you might not understand what a telethon is. So I needed to explain that context. I recommend to you that you simplify it. Whatever your story is, keep it to about a minute long. The speech is gonna be three to five minutes. So each of your tributes needs to be about 30 to 45 seconds, maybe a minute tops, um, because you're gonna need an introduction and you're gonna need a conclusion. Um, so overall, we have commemorative speech. 
You have two different types. You have the celebration, wedding toasts, um, best man toasts, uh, you know, just celebrating a celebrity that you love, a TV show, a movie, a book, an author, a location, things that make you happy. That's a celebration, or it can be a remembrance. Solemn, respectful, you're highlighting the virtues of them through direct statements, and then you're proving it through exemplifications. So that is lesson one of the commemorative speech. I hope it works for you all. Thank you.